So we're in the middle of the Iger hike. And previous episode I talked about my third profession as a Amazon FBA seller. Um, we got another hour left or so of this hike. So I'm going to talk about something else for the second half of the hike. Um, and if you're not interested in the subject, you could turn off the sound and put on some music. But I want to talk about um, my opinion. My opinion of lessons learned. So this is not advice on life lessons, but my opinion. And I'm doing this video mainly for my kids, but hey, you're welcome to my opinion of um, 59 years of living on this planet. Some of the lessons that I've learned. So I'm gonna do these in just random order, just as they come uh, from my thoughts. I don't have a prepared list. And the first thing I want to talk about is don't be afraid to ask. And especially for my kids because they're growing up they were really shy. They're less shy now, but don't be afraid to ask. And you know how many times I would have been in trouble on this trip if I didn't ask, oh is this is this a right train? Is this the right way? You know, and it's okay to even ask twice. They give an answer that sounds strange. Ask another person to confirm. Or you could even ask that person again. Hey, are you sure this is right? Or can I do this? You know, um, I went to a, a hotels early, like 11 a.m. You ask, oh, can I check in early? And uh, I think all the time they said yes. And I asked for a room with a view and they would give it to me. So always ask. Don't be afraid to ask. You know, asking twice is okay. But more than twice, probably not a good idea. Okay, another um, thing that I learned is to slow down. Slowing down will be faster. What do I mean by that? If you hurry up, you rush, you're gonna make mistakes. Maybe you forget to pack everything. And then you gotta go back and get that thing you forgot to pack. And now you wasted more time. And this is true for Lots of things, not just traveling. You know, when you're doing some kind of work, slow down. So number three, go with the flow. What do you mean by that? What I mean is, if the universe is pointing one way, like here, it's going downhill, just go downhill, follow the path. And it's not, you know, it, might, it may seem very simple, but, you know, if the weather is bad, don't go out. If it's raining, don't go hiking in the middle of the mountain when it's raining and snowing. Unless you love that stuff. Some people love hiking in the rain. If that's you, then go for it. You know, but um, you got to flow like water. That comes from... Uh, a Zen saying, you know, you got to live your life like flowing water. Don't resist. Go in the direction that the universe is pointing at. Okay, number four of my opinions, not advice, is if you're going to do something, do it with confidence. Like yesterday, I went hang gliding. And I had to run off a cliff. You got to do that with confidence. Even if it's the first time you're doing it, you better run off that cliff with confidence. Don't hesitate. 
Imagine running off that cliff and hesitating. That is the worst thing you could do and that is true for most things in life. You know, whatever you're doing, even if it's the first time you're doing it, do it, do it with confidence, okay? And you're gonna get much better results. Uh, and then the next rule is the opposite of this. If you're gonna hesitate, don't do it. If you're gonna hesitate running off a cliff here, just don't do it. Maybe today is not the right day. Maybe you could do it tomorrow or next year even. And this reminds me of a good line from one of my favorite movies, Ronan. Great movie, Robert De Niro. He was, he's a like an ex-CIA agent and um, he was exchanging they were exchanging weapons with cash and um, he knew right away something was wrong and he, he um, uh, stood back whereas the other guy um, the other actor the guy, uh, his name's last name is Bean and he, he just went straight forward and was um, exchanging weapons for cash and it was an ambush and the other guy the third character I forget the, uh, the actor's name he's also famous too he asked Robert De Niro how did you know that was an ambush well he wasn't sure and he says you know he, he learned that if you're not sure you're sure that it's not right so because he wasn't sure about the whole scenario he knew it wasn't right so if you're not sure about something don't do it it's not for you okay that applies to a lot of things in life so the next one uh, it's kind of like a corollary to this if you want to do something do it as long as it's not harming somebody you know you want to do something you're not really sure just do it you know um, especially you know you're thinking about doing it you're kind of embarrassed about it uh, just do it if you're embarrassed about it no one's gonna remember no one's gonna remember um, that embarrassing moment okay you want to go out and dance go out and dance even if you feel embarrassed about it you know don't regret later I think regret is worse than embarrassment so it's better to be embarrassed for that few minutes than to regret it rest of your life okay here's an important one if something goes wrong don't blame others don't look for someone to blame instead take responsibility now that's different from blaming yourself you know whatever happened that went wrong okay might have been because of someone's fault but I'm sure there was a portion of it that you were responsible for. So figure that out. Figure out what you were responsible for in this particular situation. Whatever it was that didn't go the way you wanted. All right, let's go for this. okay so why do you need to do that well if you don't take responsibility if the same thing happens the same problems gonna happen or it may happen but if you take responsibility for what just happened you can make adjustments 
for your portion that contributed to this problem. So first step is to take responsibility. Second step is to make corrective action. Look at this beautiful hiking path. Wow, nice. So next one, I have a question for you. Which is a more valuable asset? Is it being lucky? Is it having a talent? Or the ability to persevere? Out of those three, which attribute would you rather have? Um, in my opinion, the ability to persevere is the most important attribute. Because if you have talent at something, if you can't persevere, if you can't be consistently working at it, your talent's going to be wasted. If you're lucky, um, you're going to waste that luck unless you follow through. Perseverance, you know, if you, even if you're not talented at something, if you keep working at it, you're going to get better. You may not be as good as someone who was naturally talented at something, let's say at baseball or whatever it is, but if you keep at it, you're going to be pretty good at it. And you're going to be pretty good at everything else that you do. So that's the most important thing. That's the most important attribute, I believe. Um, and a lot of people um, might consider somebody where, you know, good things happen to them. They think that person's lucky. Um, I think more likely that that person has perseverance. Okay, another one. Try to surround yourself with um, good people. You know, if you don't have good friends around you, they're gonna be a bad influence on your life. Um, in my opinion, if you don't have good friends around you, it's even better to be alone, I think, than to have bad friends. So try to surround yourself with good friends good influence around your life and um, it's gonna affect you in a positive way speaking about perseverance um, take one step at a time that's the key to perseverance they say that journey of a what is it a thousand mile begins with one step yeah so you got a huge mountain of work to do start doing something usually best to do something that's the easiest most enjoyable that's what I do I have a, if I have a huge amount of work to do um, I start with the most enjoyable thing first and you know, at, when, once you start working on that, you're gonna get into get into the uh, flow of things, and then you could take on harder tasks. That's true of any work or studying. Okay. Okay. This is me. Okay. This is me further along this route, and I forgot to add something about. Uh, the previous episode where I was talking about Amazon FBA. So Amazon FBA, you know, I'm able to um, travel like this um, now, but initially it was a lot of hard work. I probably worked like um, 40 hours a week on top of on top of my teaching hours for like two years to build up the business. So it was a lot of hard work to. Um, to start the business, to design my products, uh, to learn, 
So that was a lot of hard work now to maintain it. I only need to spend like one hour or two a day. But if I'm designing a new product, that'll be a lot of work. Um, at this point, I don't want to design a lot of products because I want to make my business like a one man business. I don't want to hire employees. It's a lot of headache. Right now it's a perfect size for a one man business. I'm not looking to make billions of dollars. I just want to make enough money to sustain this kind of lifestyle. So this is, um, that's my goal with, with my, my work. And I, I really enjoy it. I enjoy the designing aspect, creating new products. Um, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy trying to um, keep the, keeping the customers happy and it's really neat that people are using my products and I'm the one who thought about it and they're enjoying it leaving positive comments it gives me um, gives me joy gives me joy working on this okay another one I want to talk about is um, if you're finding something that's difficult to do either you're getting embarrassed doing it or you just don't feel confident enough. You just don't feel confident enough doing it. What I do is I try to pretend I'm I'm a person that knows how to do this. You know, if I'm doing something new, um, whatever whatever it is, just pretend that you're a person who is an expertise. Just pretend that you're a person who's an expert at this task and you automatically gain that confidence and that might be just enough boost to get you through okay you could pretend to be an actor if it's something if it's something embarrassing you could pretend that you're acting you're playing that role and you get over that embarrassment um, so that's what I do and um, that's the advice that I've given to that's the advice that I've given to my kids hopefully um, they'll take it one of these days seems like they're not taking my advice on this And um, related to this is, um, so related to this is, believe, so related to this, so related to this is, believe that you are a lifelong learner. So, you know, making mistakes, that's part of your job making mistakes learn from it take responsibility for that mistake and make adjustments um, mistakes are the best teachers in life failures are the best teachers of life embrace those failures Take responsibility for that failure. Find out what it was that made you fail, what you did, what you contributed. What was your contribution to that failure? And make corrections. And next time, you won't have that same failure. You might be a different failure, but you're gonna progress along further. 
towards your goal. Gorgeous views. What an awesome bench in the middle of nowhere. I think I got just one more left, one more opinion about how to live a better life. Um, so don't stress out about problems. Whatever problems you have, it's probably not as bad as you think it is. Okay, so you know when a problem hap when a problem happens, you're all stressed out about it. You think this is like um, a disaster, but usually, in the bigger scheme of things, it's nothing. I mean, if you rate a problem between one through ten. Well, 10 got to be something like death. Unless you're dying, it's not a problem that is rated to be a 10. Okay, if, if death is 10, then 9 is something like um, getting your arm or legs um, cut off or something like that. Something severe like that. Unless that's happening, it's not a 9. 8 maybe it's like a life sentence like you got um, wrongly accused of something and now you got a life sentence in jail okay so you keep going down that scale your problem is probably like a one or a two maybe not even a one so don't worry about it um, I think that's going to be my last one. And speaking of problems, I'm having a problem recharging my DJI Action. It's been giving me problems uh, last few days. I ordered the next version, DJI Action 4, and my kids are going to bring it to Paris. But I got like three more days before I see them. So, I'm going to have to either use my big camera for my vlogs, Canon, or I brought a backup camera, DJI um, Pocket 2. So, I'll probably end up using the Pocket 2. Um, I didn't like the Pocket 2 as much. It's not easy to manipulate as uh, easily as uh, the DJI Action 3. Anyway, um, we're almost near the end of this hike and I'll just show you at the end what the Alpi, Alpine line, I forget the name of the station, I have enough batteries for that. So I think it's just around the corner. Okay, this is like the rough section of the hike. I think that's the train station right there. So we gotta go all the way down. And the DJ Action 3 won't recharge anymore. So uh, I looked at the USB port and it's all mangled. I think it's because um, I've been um, kind of abusive. I've been recharging it using the USB port and I've been putting it in my pocket and I think it got all mangled up because I've been not gentle with it. So I'm going to take lesson from the opinions I gave in this video. I'm going to take responsibility for my actions. It was my action. I could blame DJI but I'm not going to do that. I should have bought the uh, battery pack which I did for this uh, DJI Action 4 that I'm that I just recently bought. I should have used a battery pack to recharge instead of using that USB-C port. And if I did use a USB-C port, I should have been more gentle. So there's a waterfall on the trail. And we gotta keep heading this way. So I was up there just before. Here's another waterfall. And this section is definitely a lot steeper 
Then the upper section, Iger up there, hidden. You can see the Grindelwald Valley, beautiful. Okay, here's a nice gorge. Water coming down from the glaciers. And I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna have to say bye bye to my DJI Action 3 camera. I can't recharge it through the USB port. I could always use it as a backup camera. It's not dead, totally dead. Uh, bye bye. Nice knowing you, DJI Action 3. I might still use it as a backup camera though. And don't tell this to my DJI Action 3 camera, but DJI Action 4 should be a lot better. It has a bigger sensor, so it should be better in lower light. And I'm going to be gentle with it. So I shouldn't have issue with the USB-C port. Because I won't be charging it through that anymore. Sorry DJI Action 3. Nice knowing you. It's been a good camera. I've liked it. No issues besides that USB-C port. Okay, 20 minutes to Alpi Glen train station. Hour and 50 minutes. And that's the Grindelwald and three hours. Or two and a, two and a half hours back to Iger Glacier. Okay. We're going to the train station, 20 minutes. So this section has cables because uh, it's a little rocky, you know, but in if this was Bulgaria, there'll be no cables. They'll have these huge boulders you have to climb through for their hiking path. Okay, that wasn't that bad. All right, like 50 more minutes. Okay, we made it. That's the train station. We are below the tree line now. Oh, one more lesson. Have a backup plan. Always have a backup plan. And good thing I brought my backup camera. DJI Pocket 2. Although I think it's inferior for this purpose, vlogging purpose, but hey, I should still be able to vlog. Okay, we made it. Made it to the train station. And I could hike all the way down there, but I want to hike over in the other valley, Louder Burnham Valley, so I'm going to take the train back. And bye bye, DJI Action 3. I'm sorry I was abusive. I'm sorry.